John's a wonderful director, a very, very difficult guy to get along with because he's arrogant, and uh, and it, and he's he's a talented guy. A lot of talented people are arrogant, you know. Uh, and I had a lot of fights with him, but I admired him, and I liked his work. And uh, uh, the only thing was that he had Piper and Cliff, and uh, Johnny and Piper were getting along very well, both this, on the set and off. This is Piper Laurie. Piper Laurie, yes, I'm sorry. And, and, um, and they would come in in the morning, obviously having spent some time discussing the script, and uh, Johnny would say, uh, listen, I want you to do another scene for Piper. Uh, or Piper did a scene that she wants you to read. And I said, John, I don't want to read any goddamn scene. Tell Piper to go write her own script. You know, that's it. I, I don't want to read any scenes. Let's stick. Let's, if what we've got doesn't work, then we'll try something else. But let's try to do what we've got here. Well, Piper got drunker and drunker and drunker. I mean, she was doing the drunk scenes like, you know, I I said, uh, John, I mean, she's great, which she is, she's a great actress, you know. But I said, you know, that's not really the show. I mean, you get, you're doing too much of a drunk show. And John says, trust me, trust me, this is gonna be sensational. And uh, poor Cliff was kinda, he was ignoring Cliff, really. Um, and Cliff was feeling very jealous and left out. And I went to Fred. Fred didn't come in until you started having run-throughs, you know, because he liked to be fresh and come and see it the first time. So I, I went, I said, Fred, I think you better come in and look at this because uh, Johnny's getting off the track. And he said, okay. So he came in and uh, they did a run-through. And uh, Piper <laughs> was great. You know, but she was so damn smashed that you could hardly understand her. And uh, when they finished the run through, <clears throat> Johnny said, Fred, tell me the truth. Did you ever see better drunk scenes than that in your entire life? Did you ever see anybody do drunk like that? Fred said, no, it's terrific. He said, um, you got the wine, John. Now, why don't you try to get the roses and we'll have a good show. <laughs> and he walked out. <laughs> Boom! Right in the solar plexus. John stood there and said, oh shit, I see what, I see what he's talking about. You're right, yeah, god damn. Oh, wow. <laughs> and did that work? Did that grab him by the collar? Totally, totally, totally. You know, the basic thing about drunks is, when a drunk is a drunk, it, He's, he's trying, if he's trying to communicate, he's trying to be sober. He's not trying to be drunk, he's trying to be sober. So the minute they started playing it, like two people who, although they were drunk, were trying to be sober, the love started coming through. The pathos started coming through because they were helpless to be the people that they once had been. They were helpless to, to express the tenderness and the clarity that they had with each other before they got so deeply into this. And the minute they started doing that, the show just got up and took off. But this was the genius of Fred. The, he had the autonomy, he had the rep, he had the authority, and he had the perception. They didn't have to bullshit for five minutes, pardon my French, but he just said that, and that said it all. 